And now Terry Kolath is going to introduce us to the Southwest Florida Symphony Director, Nir Cabaretti. He has an amazing background as music director of the Santa Barbara Symphony and conductor of the Israeli Orchestra. He shares with Terry his love of the universal language of music and talks about the experiences of performing on stage and the energy that comes from the audience. Hello, I'm Terry Kolath, manager of the Academy of Lifelong Learning at Shell Point. I also work with John Bourne and Randy Woods for the Fine and Performing Arts concert series that we have at Shell Point. And that gives me the privilege of introducing you today to our symphony director, Nir Cabaretti. Thank you for joining me, Nir. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. We're delighted to have you here. Now, you have such an amazing background. I can't wait to share a little bit more about you with our residents. Music director of the San Santa Barbara Symphony, conductor Israeli Orchestra, and now Southwest Florida Symphony. When you're standing on stage, you know, facing your musicians, does it matter where you are? No, absolutely no. I, music is, thank God, it's such a un, universal language. And um, my career brought me to very exotic places, uh, you know, Far East, South America, many countries in Europe that I normally wouldn't go to. But just because of working opportunities, and you know, the music world is quite small, even though um, it sounds strange, but it's a small community and your name is, you know, there. And I've been in so many places, in places that I wouldn't know the language. I speak pretty many languages, <laughs> but, but, but some I don't. And nevertheless, even if I'm in Tokyo or in a place, I don't know, in Portugal or whatever, and I don't speak the language, I can immediately communicate with the people. And that gives you the sense of you're at home. You know, we're doing the pieces that we all know. Uh, if I'm going to play a Brahms symphony, the musicians have a long history with that piece. I have my personal uh, experience with the piece for at least 20 years or so. So we come with a point where we have, it's sort of you meet someone out of your neighborhood, out of your country maybe, but you have so much in common. So this uh, sense of being at home is something that is it's quite difficult to describe, but it's very authentic. And, and um, the one thing that I like is to really work in beautiful places. So that's for sure. And <laughs> that's, that's what's brought you. me here. <laughs> that's right. Well, they say music is a universal language. How it wonderful. Is. How wonderful. Now, um, you have a whole season here under your belt. This is starting your next season. And we have a partnership. Shell Point Retirement Community with the Southwest Florida Symphony. That's really important to us. It's definitely very important to us. Uh, you know, it is an essential part of our activity, our music making, is reaching out to people that might not, you know, make the drive to our normal performing arts center. And we are so thrilled that Shell Point has such an accomplished uh, facilities that can uh, accommodate our uh, needs acoustically, you know, space-wise. We love coming here and um, it's really add a lot. Uh, I've, I've been here already a few times. The, the hall is packed. <laughs> Beautiful energy comes from the audience and that's something that people might not know, but it is so important for the performer on stage to receive this energy from the audience. I mean, it's very obvious that in sport, that's the case, you know, normally the, the, the teams that play, when they play in their own stadiums, they, they perform better because they have the audience, the fans, background. That's very much the same in, in music. And so if the hall is like empty or, and, and you know, I've been, it's been my life, you know, touring, I was tours, touring Scandinavia, whatever, 25 performances in, in different cities. Some of the cities were not that well attended, and, and that makes a difference in the performing because you want to give the best out of yourself, and this extra push from the audience makes a huge difference. Oh, that's so we wonderful. love coming here, obviously. That's wonderful, and we have such an appreciation for classical music here, Indeed. music in, in general. Well, let's talk a little bit about our three concerts that you're going to bring right. to us. Holiday Pops, how much fun is that? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and, and I want to say that... Uh, for the symphony, for the Southwest Florida Symphony, the, the Holiday Pops concert is extremely uh, busy and, and, and intense program. We run it in five different locations. Uh -huh. Yes, including bringing the show uh, north to the state in St. Augustine. They booked us, so we are not only representing our own uh, county, Lee, right. but we are offering this show also out uh, and, and based on our reputation, they booked us. We're having two shows, as I said, St. Augustine, 
and uh, one, one here and one Babar Men in, on Sanibel Island, a few miles away from here. So it's really an, an important activity for us. We love the program. And of course, you know, the, the, there's nothing more beautiful to connect the festivity, the celebration with good music. So this is, uh, we're looking forward to a really uh, beautiful performances and packed houses. <laughs> Very nice. And then our Discovery concert. Yes, Beethoven. which is also something that we offer. And I know we have a lot of fans here in Shell Point for that. And that is a, a unique opportunity for people who might not be that familiar with story. You know, every piece of music has a history. A composer does not write a symphony just like that. It, it, it takes a while. Sometimes it's months. Sometimes it's years. You know, Brahms was working on his first symphony for four years or so. Um, you know, there were composers along the history that were easy writers. You know, Haydn wrote 100 symphonies. They're a bit shorter. But, you know, Beethoven was struggling with just nine. You know, so, and, and then this nine become the standard. You don't want to, because Beethoven died after the Ninth Symphony. So did Schubert, so did Bruckner, so, so did Dvořák. So sort of nine became the number you don't want to exceed. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is it, I want to right, live longer. Right, actually eight, yes. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so to come back to the discovery, we dedicate one program to know a little bit more of the history behind the music. And uh, really one of the fascinated, fascinating pieces in the rep repertoire is Beethoven Eroica Symphony the number three. A long history also related to Napoleon Bonaparte, who was that time the hero of Europe. We're talking about uh, slightly after the French Revolution. So the piece, you know, Beethoven, who was a big humanist and uh, the very first composer to get away from the church power, so to say. He's the very first, what we call today, freelance musicians. He would not write for the prince of that or for the bishop of that. Beethoven writes because Beethoven wants to write. And he couldn't care less about the, I would say, the regime or the, and he admired Napoleon exactly because of that, because he took away the power of the church and things like that. Then he was at the same time, to see that Napoleon actually, you know, uh, put himself as an emperor and that somehow put it back to, so I actually don't like that much. So at the end, he actually went away from the dedication to Napoleon. So um, this is an incredible story, which also reflects the time of history in Europe. And so we want to share a little bit with the audience. And, and my colleague, Leif uh, Bialand, will do an excellent job of telling the story behind that. And also, what brought Beethoven? What language does he use? the themes that we know from the symphony, maybe they are coming from somewhere else. Maybe use that in a song 20 years before, uh -huh. in a string quartet or something. You know, composer, they don't recycle, but they influence themselves, you know. They're not only influenced by other composers, they themselves influence other pieces that they will write later. And very often, even Mozart or, or whatever, Shostakovich or Mahler, they would use a theme that they used maybe 20 years ago in a different context, in a different key, slightly different length, slightly different harmony, whatever. So we will tell the story of the Eroica. Fascinating. And then we have the symphonic folklore, Mendelssohn, De Falla, and Copeland. And we'll talk about that in our next interview because we're so fortunate that you're going to come back in the Academy of Lifelong Learning and talk before this concert. Absolutely. We are so delighted to meet you. Delighted that we are a beautiful enough place to draw your attention that you would want to come here. <laughs> that's just a place that's hard to compete with, I tell you. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. And we look so forward to continuing our partnership and enjoying your concerts. Thank you so much. So look at your concert brochure, Music in Motion. You will find more information about the three concerts we've talked about today. And we'll have more opportunity to get to know Maestro Nier Cavaretti.